Hello again and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at some fairly uncommon machine which you don't necessarily see very often but it is out there so you just have to know how to look for it. Take a look at those two very attractive carry cases. This is a purpose-built and they're very rugged and inside of those cases there is something hiding. So once we remove the case covers we see something which is rather beautiful. We see gorgeous brushed aluminum metalwork and it is unmistakably a pioneer. So what you see here is the Pioneer's best shot at professional audio equipment. You're probably familiar with Pioneer lesser models, RT1020, RT1010, and RT1050, which is a two-track 15-inch per second machine. Those are very fine machines, but they are decidedly consumer-grade machines. There are quite a few features that do not rise to the level of even semi-professional and even in the 1050 model. For once they are using mechanical function switches and those switches are very prone to breakage. After 40-50 years of storage and use the plastics become brittle and the keys might stop working. That happened on one of my machines. It was beautiful otherwise and it was working great until the button started misbehaving. And at this point, the repair was very, very hard, if possible at all. So I just ended up selling the machine for parts, which is uh, very disappointing considering that Pioneer machines are generally very well made otherwise, except for this particular switch. So as you can see in this particular machine, which is RT2022, Pioneer got away from mechanical switches and went ahead with logic controls. And you, here you can see a very nice wired remote control that works for this machine. So now you have full logic operation and it's very nice soft touch skis and they don't seem to break at all. That's a great improvement. What else did they change when moving to this uh, semi-professional line? For once they introduced removable head block. Once you remove two, few, two screws you have full access to this nice head block. Unfortunately, it doesn't rise quite to the condition or expectation of real professional machine because it has flutter roller here. But you would like to see one before the playback head. Why this particular solution? I don't know. But that's what it is. Otherwise, it's a very well made professional head block. Very high quality. Now, on this block, you see 2 slash 2. And that indicates 2 track system. 2 channel, 2 track. You have multiple choices here. You can go with a 4 track head block. And then you be, your machine might become four track, two channel. On the other hand, if you add another electronic module to this machine, it will become four track, four channel machine, which is uh, sometimes used in recording and it could be a very, very nice feature to have.
the separate module, electronic module and tape drive, they can be used separately. They can be placed separately on your table or otherwise and connect to each other with cables. Or they could be stacked very nicely. And that's what we're going to do next. So what you see here now is the more common configuration. Like I said, if you go with four channels, you can add another module below this one. And they nicely lock together with those hooks. There are two ways of arranging this particular stack. As you can see here, the electronic module sticks out forward a little bit. And I like this particular arrangement. To me, it looks more interesting. Most people mount them differently. They make them look flush. Okay, that's your choice. When Pioneer decided to move into semi-professional market, they introduced another very valuable feature. And it is front panel accessible EQ and bias controls. So within reason, now you don't have to take machine apart to calibrate it for different tape. You can do it from the front panel. You simply undo a couple of screws, remove this protective piece of glass, and set the conditions you want. You can set EQ to NAB or IEC, and you can set bias to different points and different speeds which is very, very convenient. Of course, internally you still have a slew of controls for much more precise calibration. The electronic module has pretty standard array of controls, input sensitivity, microphone, tape or source, and recording controls. On the back of the machine, you will see an interesting array of controls, connectors, and whatnot. You will have function con cable connecting the tape drive to the control module, which is kind of normal. You also have remote control connector. On top of that, you see three other cables. One has to do with input recording functions. But the most interesting one is playback output. You see, on some machines that separate into two modules, the tape drive only has a tape head in this case, playback head. And this head will have direct connection to the connector on the back panel. There is no electronics in that chain. Pioneer did it differently. They put the early stages of playback preamplifier into the tape drive, including EQ control. So what you see coming out of here is already equalized playback signal, which makes it very, very interesting in this case, because normally it just simply connects to the bottom module here, that cable, and you take signal output for your amplifier, output out of those connectors in the module. So in this case, the pre-amplified and EQ'd signal comes down this road, goes to the module, gets some controls and meters, and then comes out. So the question then becomes, can you improve the sound by simply taking it out of this connector? And the answer, of course, is yes, you certainly can do that. And there are two ways of doing it. One way is simply to plug an external amplifier into this connector. That will work marvelously well. The only issue is 
that you have a little bit less signal than you get out of the line output. So your, your preamplifier might have to work a little bit harder. This is not a problem for most normal amplifiers, so which have a lot of gain adjustment. Like in my system, I have plenty of adjustment, and that's how I use this machine. However, if you do it this way, you lose very nice function, which is the meters. The meters stop working. You get signal, but they don't show anything. Some people find it unpleasant. Okay, so for this reason, what I do, I put Y adapters into those lines. So one line goes to the bottom module, which will still provide meter function for your pleasure. But it will also go to the, another branch, which goes to the external preamplifier. I think this is the best combination because it gives you both worlds. You have meters working, showing the signal, modulation, whatnot. And you also have clean, unobstructed signal out of this particular connector. That's definitely my pre preference for using this machine as a playback machine. Before we go any further, a couple of words about performance, electrical performance and characteristics of this machine. Even though it's a fairly old machine, it still has very respectable electrical performance. Here you see the frequency plot of system using SM468 tape, or actually in this case it's ATR master tape, which is very similar in characteristics, except for the headroom. And if you look at this plot, it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. It's flat in the middle and upper frequencies, and it's one of the flattest you will ever see. Actually, at, at uh, 50 inches per 15 inches per second, it will extend all the way to about 30 kilohertz. But on the bottom end, you see some irregularities, and that's very typical. And it is most, mostly the result of particular geometry of pioneer heads. Nothing you can do about it. You just have to accept it. In general, this much variation, which is almost like 1 dB excursion plus and minus, a little bit more than I would expect from a very good machine running at 15 ips. If this plot was taken at 30 ips, I would say that was good. At 30 ips, as we know, you expect those variations, and your frequency response at low frequencies sometimes will have some nasty character. That's normal. But I would say it is a bit too much at very low frequency. It's still no big deal. It's still within 1 dB plus or minus, which is well within the company's status specification. But ideally, I would like to see this area smoother. Still, overall, a very, very good response. Nothing to be ashamed of. Now, of course, I wouldn't be me if I didn't look for some possibility of using platters and AG DIN halves with this machine. Basically, since it already has tried and lock, you're already partially set. But what you need is two holes for the drive pegs on the platter. And those holes did not exist there. You can see them now. You can see some scratches around, but that's not a big deal, because what you're looking at is actually an addition. This disc, I added small ring with those two holes. It simply bolts on top of the regular hub. If you look at the standard hub, you will see no such ring. 
So that ring can be very easily added to the machine. And as you can see, it has been used on some occasions. Witness is those two scratches. Tape loading on this machine is fairly trivial, fairly standard, except for a couple of things. Number one, I'm not crazy about those hub adapters. I much prefer the locking types. And this you have to juggle a reel in your hand, an adapter, put them together and then put it on the machine. It's just a little bit more complicated. The adapters are less expensive, I understand, but they're not as convenient as, for example, TIAC or some other adapters you might encounter. Another interesting feature is this little lever. You see it's still in this, in this particular position to make loading easier. After you load the tape, you're supposed to flip it this way, so it becomes a tensioner. Okay, it's good, but the problem is, very often you simply forget to flip it back. So in this case, you have no tension adjustment or tension compensation on that particular that left reel. In terms of what I like and I what and what I don't like about this machine, it's a pleasant machine to use. It's actually a very nice looking one, especially if you get clean sample like this one is. It has nice functions. It's got front panel adjustable EQ and bias controls, which is very good. It's got nice logic controls for its tape drive, which I also appreciate. It's, they work marvelously well. The tape heads are very good in terms of sound quality. But what I find objectionable, there are a couple of things. One is absence of XLR connectors. In a machine of this caliber, I really would love to see XLRs. Yes, I understand. At the time this machine was introduced, XLRs were still not as common. I understand it. But I would like to see them. Another one is the real size is limited to 10 inches only. I would like to see bigger reels. And finally, probably, I would like to see variable speed winds or spooling. This machine doesn't have it. Uh, please realize it was designed before those features became kind of commonplace in semi-professional machines. So take it for what it is. It is a nice machine to have. It has good sound quality and some nice features. And it can be had for reasonable prices. O of course, like most things, it's been moving, price has been moving up lately, unfortunately. Another feature I don't like here is mechanical tape counter with no search function. Well, at least return to zero would be nice. And some machines on the market would have mechanical return to zero counters, which is acceptable. It's a step forward in the right direction. So overall, it's a nice machine if you get it for good price and you are interested in playing your 15 inch per second master tapes. It's not a bad choice at all. And with that in mind, Let's play some music.
would like to mention a few more words before my recording device runs out of space. So number one, what you've been listening is exceptionally good recording in a if you like 15 inch tapes, definitely get this particular one. It was playing track number three. Like I said, this tape is simply exceptional. Overall, this machine is a wonderful reproducer, even without XLR connectors. As you can see, or maybe you heard this sound quality coming through, I hope you got some good idea about it. It's a very fine sounding machine, because you eliminate a bunch of auxiliary circuits from the signal chain when you take signal straight from the tape drive. That's the best way to get sound out of this particular model. And sorry about that nasty pop in the middle of music. Uh, this system now plays 50 tubes, all told. So one of them apparently has developed problems, so it needs to be found and replaced. <laughs> sorry about that. But otherwise, let me know if you have any questions about this machine. And as always, thank you for coming. Come again and please stay well. Thank mm -hmm. you.